In this question, fictional reactants A and B combine to form product BA2 in an elementary reaction. So here we can see we've got 2A plus B goes to make BA2. And if we look at our diagram, we can see that here as well. We've got two A's, one B, and it creates BA2. An elementary reaction is a reaction that is really simple and it takes place by just one process. So there's no intermediate steps in this reaction. All that happens is these three particles collide at the same time and they combine to form this molecule. So the first question asks how many molecules are involved in this reaction? So that's how many individual molecules. We have one, two, three, because we've got one B and two A's. So we have three molecules involved in this reaction. We're asked, what is the molecularity of this reaction? So unimolecular means there's only one molecule at the beginning in the reactants. Bimolecular means there is two in the reactants. And termolecular means there are three in the reactants. So this one is going to be termolecular because there are three molecules in the reactants. Okay. Next is asking us about the order of the re reaction with respect to the concentration of each of our reactants. Now, we're not given any other information in this question to figure this out. Now, you may remember earlier in this unit, whenever we've been talking about orders of reaction and differential rate laws, they've always been experimentally determined. That means you can't predict them just by looking at the chemical equation. You have to conduct an experiment to find out what the rate law is. However, with an elementary reaction, that's one of these really simple reactions that doesn't have any intermediate steps. It all happens in one step. For those reactions, there is a way to predict the order of reaction with respect to each reactant. So have a look at the reference sheet. Down here, you can see differential rate laws for elementary reactions. So this tells us if we have this chemical equation, then the rate is given by what looks like a familiar equation. Apart from here, do you see that the power on the concentration of A is actually the coefficient of A from the chemical equation. And the power on the concentration of B is the coefficient of B from the chemical equation. That's what it tells us here. A and B are the coefficients of A and B in the chemical equation. So unlike in our typical rate laws shown up here, where the order X and Y, the orders of the reaction, are not related to the coefficients uh, in the chemical equation, for differential rate laws, they are. So even though with a typical reaction we carry out, the order, that's the X and the Y, which are the powers of the concentration of A and concentration of B in the rate equation, are not related to the coefficients of A and B in the chemical equation. For elementary reactions, they are. So the order of the reaction with respect to A is going to be the coefficient of A in the chemical equation, which is 2. So the order of reaction with respect to A is going to be 2. The order of reaction with respect to the concentration of B is based on the coefficient of B in the chemical reaction. There's no coefficient there. It's just 1. So the order of reaction with respect to B, that's just going to be 1. So our overall order of reaction, remember we get that by adding up the order of the individual reactants, that's going to be three. So overall, it's a third order reaction. Finally, to write out our differential rate law, it's going to be the concentration of A squared and the concentration of B on its own. So K times the concentration of A squared times the concentration of B. So... The difference here from the previous questions we were doing is that we're using the chemical equation. The coefficients of each reactant determine the order.